brethren. I want to uh, go to the ninth chapter of John and look at this wonderful, this uh, marvelous story of Jesus. He's uh, in the eighth chapter, as you remember. This is, uh, this is the account of the mo a man born blind. And Jesus has just left uh, a, a pretty uh, serious confrontation with the Pharisees in the temple. This is when uh, they brought him the, the woman caught in adultery, and then he's engaged the Pharisees, and uh, they, didn't, uh, they didn't like what he had to say and his uh, responses to them. And so that's when, you know, we read where the Jews had taken up stones to cast at him. But he hid himself, and going through the midst of them, he left the temple area and so passed by. Now, we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to look and see how Jesus, he's not deterred by the circumstances and the situations. He keeps his focus. And now we're going to see the grace of God. We're going to see how the grace of God uh, uh approaches a man, contacts a man. This man, as you remember, he didn't plead for Jesus. We don't have a record of Jesus calling out for him or anything like this, but Jesus, and his, his path intersected Jesus that day. Yeah. And so um, as, um, as, he, as he hid himself and as he passed through the midst of them and he passed by, he came and uh, he passed by a man born blind. And disciples asked Jesus, if you remember, they said, what caused this? Uh, master, his parents sinned, or did he sin? And Jesus said, neither, neither of these. His blindness is so that the work of God might be shown in him. So the account says Jesus stopped, and he spit on the ground, and out of that spittle he made some clay, and he put it on his eyes, and he told him, he said, now you go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And, uh, and, and you, I, I, as a point of note that Jesus didn't send anybody with him to go with him and assist him, this man found his way back to the pool of Siloam, and he did just as Jesus directed him before, because he came back, came back seen. Mm -hmm. And all the people who knew the man, we're going to rehearse this real quick, and everybody who knew the man uh, couldn't believe that a man of born blind uh, was now able to see. So they wanted to know, how did this thing happen, and, and who did this great thing for you? And then actually, you remember, some didn't believe it. That was actually the man. Uh, but rather, someone looked like him. But, you know, he said, I'm he, I'm the man. And so uh, this, this miracle uh, also took place on the Sabbath. Now, so this is very important. This man ended up, because of this, this, ended up, this man ended up having to confront and see the, the Pharisees about this uh, healing. And uh, this miracle that Jesus did on the Sabbath, it caused a great confusion, as you remember, with the Pharisees because they didn't understand God. This man who did the healing, he's got to be a sinner, they said, because only a sinner would heal a man on the Sabbath. But then, how, how, could, a, uh, how could a sinner do such a miracle? Right? And uh, so they were divided about it. And, and only God or a man of God could heal a man born blind. And this man could not be of God, though, because he keeps not the Sabbath. So the Pharisees asked the man, what do you think? Is he a sinner or what? What do you think? And, and the, he, he's a prophet. And the Pharisees not believing, so they go back, they start all over. They don't believe that he was really blind anyway. So they call for his parents, his parents came, and they confirmed, yes, this is our son, yes, he was born blind, but how he's able to see now, we don't know. Now, their parents feared the Jews, so they said that, now, he's a grown man, and he can, he can answer for himself. So the Pharisees asked the man again, now, how was it? Go back through this thing. How was it that you're able to see now? So now we'll witness. Now this is where the story kind of changes a little bit. So we're going to witness how this, um, how this man's, we'll see this, there's more happened to this man than his, his physical eyes were opened up. He's about to give testimony to faith he has received. Now, the, and we're going to see the marvelous freedom of grace, too, that gives confidence for living unto God. It says, man raised up. This man born blind has been given to see face to face who his accusers are, but yet he's been given so much more than this. He has been able to see the truth by faith. And now this, now this faith is set to work in this man. And this is what I wanted to bring out this morning, how, now, how this man let the faith of God work in him. And what the outcome was. Uh, now his, his faith takes action. His faith compels this man to stand alone. Now you know his parents have left him. They left him to fend for himself. As Jesus is not there. 
His disciples are not there, and his friends is not there. He is by himself. Mm -hmm. And so he, uh, he stands there, and he defends what happened to him. Amen. Uh, now, this man will not let the spirit of faith uh, pass him by, but he'll, he'll allow the this, this spirit of faith to work in him to the glory of God. Now, he will not side with the religious leaders, you notice. That that, that would have been a, a, a temptation. But he, uh, he knows that he's been healed. He knows that he can see now, and he's going to stand up for the one who healed him. He will, uh, he will be rejected by the world, and he'll be rejected by uh, the uh, religious leaders of the day. Uh, but, you know, this is the nature of faith, as you'll see in this, in this account here. Uh, faith in Christ, will, it will definitely bring you face to face with this world. It will ask you, he'll ask you that same question, who do you say this man is? And uh, so we, are, we already understand that it's the nature of faith. It's by design that faith will lead us into these confrontations. Yeah. Uh, it, will, it will ultimately have you confront unbelief and error. Uh, faith, will, will, faith will bring us into confrontation with unrighteousness and up against the teachings of men and anything that oppose the truth of God. You see that faith is not only the evidence of things not seen and, and our source of confidence in God, but it's, this, it's the same evidence and confidence that gets us through these, these confrontations, these periods of struggle and opposition. Uh, faith is designed to take us through these things, as we'll see in this man here. Now, uh, he chose to testify of the great miracle that took place. And so, actually, now what happens is his testimony uh, turned out to be a, uh, a, rep a reproving of the religious leaders because they were unstirred. They were unmoved by this great miracle. And so they, this is something that uh, they didn't expect from this man, that he would stand up and he would reprove them for their hardness of heart and, the, and not seeing this great thing had happened. They couldn't even admit that it happened. He told them since the world has began, no one has ever heard of a man being born blind receiving a sight. And if this man, uh, if he were not of God, he couldn't do nothing. So it's the blind man telling these religious leaders that. And so, you know, the, the man was actually right. He had seen it correctly. And he is able to recognize the hand of God. And more than that, we see that he latched on to it. And uh, now the man is a Jew. The blind man's a Jew, but he didn't let any of these, these, these things stand in his way. He was willing to give up his family, his friends, his religion for Jesus, the man who, uh, who uh, ha allowed him to see. Now, uh, what is the Lord's reaction to this? Let's look at this a moment quickly. What can you expect from Jesus when you stand up for him? When the world rejects you and you've been cast out, this man was cast out, what can you expect from Jesus then. When Jesus heard that the man had been cast out, Jesus found the man. Yep. Jesus speaks, to, Jesus found the man and he speaks to this man's faith. Dost thou believe on the Son of God? Who is he, Lord, that I may believe on him? Mm -hmm. Thou hast both seen him and it is he that speaketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped Jesus. Amen. I want to propose to you that when Jesus passes by, and he gives a man to see, this is not the end of the matter. Right. This is really just the beginning. This is, all, this is only when a man can actually proceed. Mm -hmm. It's that we were all blind and in this condition. And Jesus passes by, and now we see. And so we find ourselves, if we respond properly like this man did, you'll find yourself cast out. You'll find yourself rejected by the world. Uh -huh. You'll find yourself uh, cast out. Uh, by those who oppose you and, and the truth you stand for. This man was cast out, and Jesus came and found him. He took him, okay? Then he came back, and he got, he got the man is what he did. He found the man, and he got the man. The man became a disciple, and Jesus was able to teach him. Amen. And I think what we see in this account is perfectly consistent with the nature of faith, the way of faith. Uh, too many of those... And we see them all about us. They've, been, they've, been, they've had their eyes put, sad, put on their eyes. They've been told to go wash. And they've been received their sight. And yet they have not allowed the faith. They have not allowed this to demonstrate itself in them. 
So like, like we see it naturally does in this account. The Lord has given us another floor day today. And uh, different brethren will get up and, 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 they're, and, and they'll, and they'll uh, give testimony to their faith in the Lord. And the Spirit will move among us today. And he will, he will bring us up and he'll, he'll give us the, uh, the opportunity to express ourselves. We will, we will desire to be built up in the Spirit today and so that we can, uh, we can better uh, t be a testimony to those about us. And so this morning, I would encourage you to let the faith of God express itself in you and express itself in me also. As we, we uh, I see it, you know, as um, this is the mercy of God in this day. This is a time that we've been given and we can take advantage of it. Another day, Amen. okay, where we can, we can enlarge ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so then uh, on that final day, when the Lord comes and, and he takes us to himself, then we have, we'll have a larger vessel by which to be filled with the things of God. So this morning, we look forward. It's, it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing when you can actually look forward to the Lord's day. And you know that you're going to be added to, that you're going to see some things that you didn't see before. You're going to see them clearer and things like that. So this morning, uh, Brother Gene has a lesson for us. And we'll have a prayer before he gets our lesson, and, and we'll start with that. <clears throat> 